Hi everybody, I'm making a video today about um, the treatment options that you keep hearing about on the news and to your colleagues maybe. Um, what are they? But before I do all of that, I need you guys to understand how they work. So that's what I'm gonna focus on first. This is the simplified version of what's happening to us. This is not directed toward healthcare providers. They know a lot. They probably know more than me. Of course they know more than me. Um, a lot of things are out there and everyone's confused. Like, well, why aren't we getting these treatments? Why can't we have more of these medications and stuff? It doesn't work that way exactly yet. Um, and I'm gonna break that down. So treatments, right? Um, there's a few options available out there. These are not proven, okay? These are not de dedicated COVID-19 or coronavirus treatments. They are treatments used for other diseases. The lungs, giant balloon with small balloons inside filled with fluid in between. That fluid is our blood. The function of our lungs is to provide oxygen to our body. Structure, structure of the virus, round, spikes on it, it's called the S proteins. Next to it are the HE proteins, which are the hemagglutinin proteins, which help both of these things are responsible for attachment to the ACE receptors in our respiratory tract. The next thing they have is something called the M protein, which provides the structure for the virus, the curvature. Next thing we have is the envelope, which is the round structure around it, the envelope uh, protein as well. And open it up, inside of it is the RNA with the N protein, uh, the spike attaches to the ACE2 receptor in our respiratory tract. Now, when it attaches, that and the HE protein are responsible to attach and insert the virus into the cells. Once this virus gets inside, it releases something called its RNA. RNA is nothing but coding. All the computer people out there who know coding, that's exactly what it is. It codes for a purpose. It codes to create more of itself. It replicates. When it replicates inside of our cells, it creates more and more and more copies till that cell pops, releases more viruses to the rest of our cells, and so on and so forth. And that is what a viral infection is, whether it's flu, parainfluenza, or whatever, in general, in general, so don't kill me scientists, in general, this is what it does. Our immune system is filled with soldiers. And that's the best way to see it. There's white cells, T, T cells or lymphocytes. You know, there's there's uh, specialized white cells like neutrophils, macrophages, T killer cells. So there's a lot of soldiers, a lot of specialized soldiers that do a bunch of different things, right? Or they have chemicals, they have uh, cytokines, chemokines, things like that. Their responsibility is to seek out and target viruses or any foreign invaders into our bodies. But the problem is, a war in real life and a war within our body is the same thing. There's a lot of collateral damage and that's what a disease pretty much is. This virus goes inside, replicates, triggers our immune system, okay? Our immune system goes havoc, releases white cells, macrophages. They eat up this virus, right? They just eat it up. And when they eat it up, they start breaking it down. And when they break down, they explode. The virus explodes, the cells around it explode, there's inflammation everywhere, there's chemokines, cytokines, IL-8, IL-6, all these things you're gonna hear, okay? Why is this important? Why am I telling you all this? This process is what medications and treatments are based on. Medications and pharmaceuticals are directed toward two things. One, preventing the virus from replicating. Other medications which seek to mitigate or reduce the amount of inflammation and destruction that's caused, which ultimately leads to our problem. Once again, I'm going back to the concept of our balloon lungs, right? Big balloon, small balloons inside, fluids on the inside. Once these balloons start popping on the inside, decreased oxygen is delivered to the rest of our body. That's when we have something called shortness of breath, dyspnea. It's a fancy word, okay? When we have dyspnea is when we're like, oh damn, something's wrong with us, I can't breathe. And that is the problem. This is a severe, acute respiratory syndrome. I told you about the size of the virus. It goes deep down into your lungs, right? Multiple balloons are popping everywhere, right? The rate at which they pop, different reasons, right? If you have hypertension, diabetes, all these other comorbidities might contribute to it. We're still trying to find out. But regardless, the older people are seen to be affected, but that's not the case anymore. Remember I told you our population is different and our population, now we're seeing more and more cases of younger people getting infected. Regardless, the point is inflammation damages our existing functioning cells. And when that happens, we have symptoms of shortness of breath. This doesn't have to be so severe. A lot of us are positive and we could be at home with just a sore throat, with a runny nose, because that's the area that's getting destroyed here. And the inflammation is why we're having these symptoms, okay? The response to the virus is why we're having these symptoms. You have sinus infection, a dry cough, our J receptors in our lungs get triggered. <laughs> we cough, 
right? That's how this works. It's such a spectrum of, of, of a reaction of our body. So we have drugs out there that sort of target these different processes of, of COVID. You're killing me, I'm recording a video. Oh shit. You have to understand something called evidence-based medicine, trials, clinical trials, all this stuff. Basically it comes down to this. You get a lot of number of people to test and you compare them with a lot of the number of people who don't get this test drug or whatever treatment you want to give them. And you see, is there a difference? Next, you see, is the difference real or not, right? Or if there's any other factors that are like, you know, associated with it. This takes a lot of time to do. We don't have that time. Literally, by the time I finish this video, probably gonna get a new paper, you know, or a new finding. So what people have done is look back and seeing that how do we prevent, treat, or, or reduce the symptoms of previous viruses? Treatments for COVID-19. Are they really treatments though? Give a unit of blood. Yeah. Okay. None of the trials are completed yet. Let's get that clear. No specific trial has been completed in toto and verified and validated to work against coronavirus COVID-19. But the things that people have tried, innovative techniques and methods based on concepts, right? and trials people have actually tested this on certain people that's why we hear about it like oh my god this drug works right it maybe it does it maybe it does i cannot sit here and say it does or doesn't because i've not had a chance to use it in the real world yet okay hopefully i never will remdesivir look at this graphic pretty much in concept what the target it is is the rna inside the virus okay it might be a few other things but generally it will stop replicating uh, it will act on some part of the RNA to prevent replication of the virus. Therefore, we won't have multiple new viruses releasing to other parts of our cells. Understood? Hopefully. Let's keep going. Chloroquine. Chloroquine was, this is a beautiful drug, by the way. Chloroquine was started for malaria. The malarial parasite eats it and gets destroyed pretty much when it goes inside of a cell. But, ne but the, over time, it's been a disease-modifying anti-rheumatic drug, meaning that it was used for anti-inflammatory effects. Uh, down regulation of, uh, of uh, immune responses. So if you look at this concept, right, how the virus goes inside the cell, infects, our immune system gets triggered, okay? And then what happens is all hell breaks through collateral damage and we have severe acute respiratory distress. Fine, so to modulate that, to reduce that collateral damage, to reduce the fire that our immune system burns into our lungs, we give chloroquine. The one study out of France, they added a Z-pack to it. They added azithromycin to it, okay? Now, azithromycin is used for bacterial infections. Now, how many of you guys have gotten to urgent care centers or primary care doctors or general things? How many of you know what a Z-Pak is? Exact. This drug is an anti-inflammatory of sorts. Well, um, in France, what they did was they added hydroxychloroquine plus azithromycin to see a, see a difference. I don't know. Maybe it works. Maybe it doesn't. It supposedly did for them. The other combination is something called lopinavir and ritonavir. Okay, these were HIV drugs, individual drugs. They're combined now, right, into two drugs called lopinavir and ritonavir. I forgot the brand name, but these are HIV protease inhibitors. Now, what are proteases? Proteases are the workhorses inside of the virus. They're the ones, they're the ones responsible for taking the RNA, replicating it, and getting everything organized inside the damn virus, okay? So what scientists have thought about and found targets for is to kill that, is to kill the worker, okay? Once they kill the worker, the RNA stops replicating, and that's a target. Has it worked? I think a, a Nedgem article came out, uh, sorry, New England Journal of Medicine article came out like a couple days ago, um, I don't know, man, these keep coming out, um, that it wasn't really negligible in its effect. The other one that I actually got a message on uh, YouTube or Facebook or Reddit, I don't know, Avagan, sounds awesome, Avagan, right? Um, this is Japan and China, um, it, it, it's existed, right? It's a favi piravir, okay? What this does, it acts on a different protein inside of the virus that is also responsible for replicating the RNA or constructing the RNA. Do not quote me on this, I'm giving generalities here. This is a target, they thought that, hey, if we killed this guy who does this job inside of the virus, maybe the virus will stop producing. Studies are you know, still pending, I'm not sure. And then finally, we have something called tocilizumab, okay? It's sort of like hydrochloroquine, in which it acts on our immune system, but this is very target specific. It acts on something called uh, interleukins, right? And I believe it acts on interleukin six. All right, guys, that's that's pretty much it. Um, I wanted to 
just clear the air a little bit, make you guys understand how medications for viruses work and then take it to the next level and say, listen, we don't have a medication that's proven to work on COVID. I hope we do soon. And I hope one of these definitely works, but I know people are working on it day to day, it's hour to hour, things are changing. So it's happening. Um, these may work on some people. They may work on others. It may not work on anyone. We don't know. We, it's so early on in the course of this process that we don't know who gets it, what what stage do you get it, what, what is the criteria for receiving it. It's really still center-based right now. It's individual center-based. Um, hopefully we'll get some uniformity amongst all the medical centers. Um, but that's, that's pretty much it. These drugs are directed toward acting on certain targets on the virus. So in order to know those targets, you gotta know the virus structure, which we do. And then we look to the back in our past research to see what's similar to this, and that's what we've been using pretty much. Um, and also you have to understand the implications of using these drugs. Hydro hydroxychloroquine, for example, is used for people with SLE, people with rheumatoid arthritis, people with uh, inflammatory conditions. If they suddenly get consumed and put into the hospital system, what's gonna happen to their, uh, those guys? Um, so there's a lot of effects that we have by using drugs that are not made for COVID, okay? So there's that debate also. But you know, one person said that, you know, if it was your loved one, hey, wouldn't you wanna do everything? Hell yeah, hell yeah, I would wanna do everything. But the thing is, is it the right thing to do? We don't know, give me that answer, you know? I only wanna do the right thing. And hopefully we figure it out um, and you know, I'll get back in touch with you guys uh, soon. Thanks for watching.